What's up, people? Uh, nice short, nice short um, uh, video here about a little more about energy transformations and uh, more importantly, or as importantly, um, what we call work done by conservative forces. There are two types of forces. There are uh, conservative forces and non-conservative forces. Right? Um, we're going to deal here with the, a conservative force of gravity. Gravity is a conservative force. So I'm going to have to do a little calibration. Um, so yeah, one sec. Yeah, so, um, whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay, so let's look at this simple problem you've seen before. Uh, well, we've seen one like it before for sure. It says, sorry, it says let's uh, find the total mechanical energy of a block that's held 15 meters above the ground. So we're going to just make sure that we're okay with ground level is height zero. Okay. Now, if we want total mechanical energy, you know, sort of a um, sort of a, a little bit of a new thing here. Mechanical energy, by definition, is PE plus KE. I hear you're saying, wait, isn't it GPE? Well. Like we, we've made reference to um, a couple times, there are two different kinds of potential energy that we're going to deal with, um, but we got to make sure that we include them both when we talk about mechanical energy. So this is one you know, that you need to have at your fingertips. Mechanical energy, by definition, sum of potential and kinetic energies. So if we want uh, total mechanical energy, well, if this thing is held, that means for sure that kinetic energy is zero. But our GPE is MGH uh, two five fifteen. Oops, I'm doing nine point eight meters per second squared. I'd put nine point eight one. We use that in um, regions as our value of G for some reason. So GPE for us is, let's see, 2.5 times 15 times 9.8, 367.5 joules. And therefore, since kinetic energy is zero, total mechanical energy, 367.5. Now this block is released and falls to the ground. Let's find its uh, kinetic energy just before it hits. So, sorry, I should say I should say um, mechanical. Is this thing screwed up again? It is screwed up again. So I should say total mechanical energy before it hits the ground. So um, now, just before it hits the ground, that tells us that GPE is zero. So we want to know what KE is. All right, well, of course, one half mv squared. But we want to know what the velocity is just before it hits the ground. Well, we know how far it fell. Oops, oops, oops. And we know. Uh, that it starts at rest, so we can go kinematic style on this and say that v naught is zero. Uh, v is what we're looking for. Delta x is 15 meters downward. A is g, 9.8 meters per second squared downward. And we can find v. So find an equation, folks. I'll tell you this. You know, I saw somebody the other day that I said, okay, tell me the equation. And they just looked at me like I had ten heads. They, they had no clue what kinematics equations were anymore. That's not a good thing, right? If we decide to do a first quarter exam, you're going to want to know what those kinematics equations are. And that's a possibility, folks. Shanks is doing it. He's inspiring me. Anyway, equation is V squared, V naught squared plus 2A delta X. All right, that goes away. So we can get that V is um, 2 times 
times 9.8 times 15 square root, 17.1 meters per second. And then if we pop that into here, Ke is one half of 2.5 kilograms times 17.1 meters per second quantity squared. Oh snap, kinetic energy is 367.5 joules, which means that mechanical energy is 367.5 joules. Coincidence? I'm going to call this final. I'm going to call this initial. Notice that those two amounts of uh, total energy, total mechanical energy, are the same. And now hopefully, ideally, oh, oops, what can we conclude from that? Well, hopefully we can conclude the following, that in the absence of what we call non-conservative forces, like, come on, you, like friction, or air resistance, or literally, you know, a, an applied force. I wish I continued a second. This should really say, this should say mechanical. Energy is not lost or gained, but can be transformed from one type, from one form to another. All right, this is a statement of, a statement of, um, what we call conservation of energy. Right? You've heard that before. Now, in general, we can say, you know, we don't need any of these qualifiers in the absence of all this stuff. We can always say that energy is conserved, no matter what. If we want to talk about mechanical energy, then we have to qualify by saying we need the absence of non-conservative forces. Okay? All right. Now, our pendulum here, the classic, the classic conservation of mechanical energy example is the pendulum. All right, we have where it's released. We want its velocity V at its lowest point there. Um, so what we're going to use, if we say that, if we use this idea of conservation of mechanical energy, What we start with is this, Me initial equals Me final. Initial mechanical energy and final mechanical energy are the same. We can spread this or, or expand this into initial GPE and initial KE. And this is final GPE and final KE. Now, at this point, I usually say, all right, does anything go away? Is anything zero? Um, well, you might be able to tell, oh, right? Release from rest means that. Okay? And we have, let's see, well, it doesn't end up at height zero, so we can say, well, this is MGH initial equals MGH final plus one half mv final squared. All right, conservation of energy statement. Now, uh, since there is an m in every term, we can divide them all away. We're looking for vf, so I'm going to do this. g h initial minus g h final equals one half vf squared. Or that or that. Well, really, V final is the square root of 2 G H initial minus H final. Looks exactly like kinematics. It does come out to, you know, this, notice this looks like V is the square root of 2 A delta X. Same equation. All right. I recommend highly against starting with a kinematics solution because 
Well, it's some intricacies we'll see in a few uh, a few more days, a couple more days. All right, but in this case, here's how we solve, right? And we say, let's see, V F is two times nine point eight meters per second squared. Let's see, H initial one point four meters. H final zero point two five meters. And then you solve. 2 times 9.8 times, that's 1.15 meters. 4.75 meters per second. Okay? Fair enough? Okay? Now, let's look at this, yeah, let's look at the same exact question. But here's the deal. Remember, we said with, um, with uh, what do you call them there, potential energies, gravitational potential energies, we actually get to pick our own zero height. Right? So this one can get a little bit easier. We'll still start the same way. Initial mechanical energy is final mechanical energy. GPE initial plus KE initial is GPE final plus KE final. Right, we're still going to say release from rest. However, if we look at this diagram, hopefully you can see that, well, why don't I just call this height zero? We can just adjust and make this height is 1.15 meters. Right, take this 25 centimeters off that meter point four. That lets us get rid of this. Is it that much easier? I don't, I don't know. But at least it's a little bit more convenient. Right now we end up with MGH initial is one half MV final squared. We got a mass in both places. We want V. Multiply both sides by two. Take the square root. All right, we end up with the same exact solution we had here. Just notice, what's this? It's 1.15 meters. What's H initial now? It's 1.15 meters. All right, 2 times 9.8 times 1.15 meters. Okay? So it doesn't matter if you choose a convenient zero height or not. As long as you're careful, you'll get the right answer. But this can make things a little bit more convenient. Fair enough? Okay. Um, so, this is super quick. Come here. Come here. No, I don't want to right click. There you go. Um, what I'm going to do is also attach some straightforward conservation of energy problems um, that deal with changes in height and changes in speed. Okay? So, I mean, really, how do you know when to use this, this sort of solution? What I say is anytime you're trading speed for height, but it's not a plain old you know, if we just have a plain old free fall problem, something's just dropping straight down like that, just use kinematics, right? Unless they talk about air resistance or drag, and we're, we're able to talk about those now. We'll see that pretty soon. But if it's a question like this where, sure, the thing ends up lower than it was before, it ends up faster, you know, but doesn't go in a straight line necessarily, we can still use conservation of mechanical energy. The other classic example, let me go uh, over here. The other, what's this? I don't want to do that. The other classic example of these is a roller coaster sort of thing where we go, um, you know, if we go up a hill, it even works going up a hill. We could call this the initial place and that the final place. Again, we're trading height for speed, but it doesn't go in a straight line. Classic conservation of energy sort of problem. Okay? Um, all right, folks, I'll see you on Monday.